It's the Fellowship of the Geek Show, a weekly podcast about comics, the comic book industry, and other geek pop culture. Music courtesy of Manny the Martyr. And now, on with the show! Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Fellowship of the Geeks podcast. My name is Thomas Chick, and joining me for this episode is Mike Marlowe. Hey, gang. And Les Webster. Hello, all. Uh, unfortunately, Holly Briggs could not join us for this recording um, for for personal reasons. And Holly, we're thinking about you, and hopefully you can be with us next time. So, how are you guys doing? Great. Doing well, thanks. And you? Doing all right. What's been going on the last week? Well, I got to attend Who Fest, and Ooh. this is the third annual. Thoroughly enjoyed it. They once again scored with uh, big names, and it was quite the three-day event. Got to sit around, listen to Q and A's, and watch episodes plus the vendors room. So if you get a chance, think about next year. And of course, that happened the same day that they announced the new companion. Yes, yes, it did. Uh, there might have been a coincidence there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> there might have been. How about you, Mikey? What's been going on in your world? Well, I'm, as always, trying to catch up on trades. And so this week I have been reading The Fuse, which is an image book by Anthony Johnston and Justin Greenwood. Um, it's a fun little story. This is I'm on volume one still. That's how, like I said, catching up. Um, it is a fun little cop story set in an orbital city. It's basically just a murder mystery, and the cops are perfectly normal cops for the most part. And There's no aliens to be seen at this point in the story, and so... It's really kind of just a cool cop story set in space. Does it have a flavor of Outland or anything like that? Gosh, I haven't seen Outland in so long. I wouldn't go so far as to call it noir, but it's a pretty gritty, like, police procedural type story. Sounds pretty good. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, and that's also an ongoing series, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. What I've been doing the last few days or so, uh, I know you guys, I've, I've shown this to you before, but for those who are listening to the podcast, I've been checking out a website called Comic Book Plus, and it's a website that uh, is a library of comics that are public domain. that are mainly um, comics from, there may be some from the 30s, but the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And they're available, or you can read them online, or if you sign up, you can uh, download copies for your own personal collection. And that's what I've been kind of doing the last four or five days. One of them that I really caught my attention was a uh, short series called Race for the Moon. Are you familiar with this, Les? This was back about late 50s? Late 50s? It sounds familiar. I think they even came out with a collection of it here within the past three, four months. Oh, really? I hadn't seen yeah. it. Okay, I need to check that out. But it's got Kirby art. I'm not sure if he's actually... I, I didn't see any credits for writing, but I could just look at the art and go, that's that's Kirby. Jack Kirby. You know, pre-Marvel age of superhero stuff. And it, It's been pretty good. There's some... There's some Yes, there's some clunkers in there, but there, it's kind of it was it was just a different world reading, you know, the, the comics that were put out back then. But it's it's been kind of fun. Well, maybe we can link that in the show notes. Yeah, we can do that. Sounds cool. That does sound cool. And speaking of comics, as y'all may know, as we often do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kind of do, comics. don't we? Do that sometimes. It it comes up occasionally, mm -hmm. you know. This coming Saturday is Free Comic Book Day. Woohoo! 
Oh my gosh. Are you doing that again? Yeah. Yeah, this oh. is for the 15th time. This is the 15th anniversary, believe nice. it or not. Well, we told them they could have 15 chances. So. <laughs> Maybe they'll get it right this year. I don't know. We can only hope. Well, I mean, I mean, we 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 kind of joke about this, but you know, as I've told uh, the audience before, that you know, I work in a comic store, and just you know, the last week or so, you know, I've been telling some of the customers to come in about Free Comic Book Day, and they've never even they've never heard about it. So I'm like, hey, you know, so I give them a flyer and say this is what's going on, and. You ought to come back in, get a couple of comics, and hey, there's going to be some sales, and just check things out. It's usually a fun occasion. So, I mean, so there's still, you know, it's been around 15 years, but there's still people that just who've not heard heard of it. So, still trying to spread the word. That's true. Uh, I've come across several readers that had no indication, no clue that this event was around, but it is a strong event for comic shop owners and for readers, especially for readers. You get a diverse section of comics coming out, which is amazing. And this year, yeah. go, go ahead, Mike, I'm sorry. Yeah, a b- bunch of great previews for stuff that's coming up from a wide variety of publishers, um, usually including some that a lot of people have never even heard of. Exactly. Which is Which is really cool. And um, it's it's like Valentine's Day for comics. Woo-hoo. And something we may want to do is put a link, not just the website, but uh, a link to all the books that are going to be offered this year. And a lot of them have previews, uh, little teasers of, of, of the books. So uh, everybody can kind of get an idea of what's being offered and they can decide which ones they want to get when they go to their well, local shop. Well, and on a certain website we all know and love, somebody should be posting a review sometime in the next few days over some of those. I wonder who I could be talking about. Yes, but I'm in uh-huh. I'm, I'm embargoed to, uh, embargoed to not post it until May fifth, so two days right. before well, free comic day. But yes, I will be posting. Right, we can't. Yeah, we won't link to that here, but it'll be on our site. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I will have about half the books reviewed. There are the there's some really nice stuff come out this year. I mean, I, I would I would finish uh, one of them and go, hey, that may be one I really want to check out. So I'm going to be out a lot of money here in the <laughs> next couple of months. Who knew free comic book day would cost so much? Yeah, exactly. For those who are who may are not familiar with with the whole concept, uh, how it began was um, a comic store owner named uh, Joe Field who also wrote columns for one of the retailer magazines. And he's talking about trying to uh, tie in something to regarding to the, the, the success of, of the comic book movies. And, and about this time was, I think, the first amazing, uh, the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. Yes. And things kind of worked out to where that I mean, that's that's essentially what it what had happened. Diamond distributors got involved, and and things kind of unfolded to where the free comic book day would be the first Saturday in May, and that's usually when uh, the, the opening weekend of a of a comic book movie. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's a Marvel movie. <laughs> because they corner it, and I don't, I don't blame them. They do a lot more movies than than DC. And well, Avengers. that's true. Well, and it's not just Marvel and DC. There's there's a few others, but uh, hopefully we'll see some more in the next few years from other publishers making the big the leap to the big screen. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, and just tied into event. Here's a little teaser for something that you might be interested in. Uh, I know the, the the big two would try to tie it into an event that's going to be uh, going to be happening sometime in the year. That some of the smaller publishers would do little, you know, four or five pages of several books, and I think that's a great idea because that get, could get so you're not just settling on one or maybe two titles 
here's here's a handful and this kind of gives you an idea of what we're putting out and hopefully you would like these and come on back in and and buy them when they come out yeah and, and a lot of times they'll do they'll do like an issue zero type setup where they're going back and telling some backstory that's true first sometimes for a series that's already started or for one that is scheduled to start real soon when they do that zero look to it that may be or this may be the only time you see that until a collected trade with all of the first five or first arc plus number zero right. so a, a zero could end up being the first appearance of their character so the deal is if you if you go to free comic book day and you pick up one of these issue zeros and you want to and it and it entices you to read the series what you want to do is you want to talk to your comic book shop owner and get him to pre-order the stuff for you. Oh, definitely. Make sure we're, that they reserve a copy for you. Because they may not be planning to buy those unless they have some orders. That, and that way they, you won't get them if they don't buy them. You know? That's that's exactly it. If, if the owner doesn't know that, that there's an, an, an audience for that particular book, they, they won't order, order it. You know, there's hundreds of titles out there in a month a month and you know the retailer can only order so many so they got to pick the ones that they know there is a guaranteed audience that will pick them up so you got please please there's if there's a book out there that you know you want please let your local comic shop owner know so they can take care of you and then they certainly will Pro tip. There you go. You guys have uh, attended some of these. What are, what are your thoughts? I've always enjoyed them. It's been a fun experience. It's not just the books, but just the atmosphere and some of the other activities that are going on. It's a, basically a celebration of reading comics. Wouldn't you all agree? Oh, yes. I'm, uh, personally, I think it's an opportunity, plus the retailer has an opportunity to uh, as you mentioned earlier, have a sale. Uh, get people in there, have artists or writers there. You'll, you'll find locations that have cosplayers uh, in costume. Some groups will have, or some stories will have face painters. Anything to get people involved. And uh, I think it's a great marketing idea. I know I read the column by Joe Field, and it was, well, what he, if I recall, guys, he was saying that he got the idea from Baskin Robbins because they were doing a free scoop day uh, on the 2nd of May, and he thought he could probably equate that to the comic book field. Successfully, he did, and it ended up being the, the first... Um, Free Comic Book Day was two days after the Free Scoop Day, and it all just kind of fit. Then it progressed and, and such, and I thought it was a great idea. Mm, ice cream. Yeah, that sounds good right about now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, I kind of made what sounded like kind of a joke about Valentine's Day of comics, but it really kind of, I mean... Comic book shops, it's its really a lot more fun when they view it as like a holiday sort of atmosphere. It turns it into kind of the party thing, and it it really drums up a lot of support. Or it, the idea is to drum up support in the, in the community and to bring people in, and, you know, if that's what it takes. Um, and if you want another pro tip here, folks, don't just go to the shop to get free comics. Um, if you want to help them out, you want to get in the door and, and get – get in tight with your local comic shop folks buy something else while you're there grab to take a look at the shelves and, and see what other stuff is, is interesting to you and you just talk to your talk to the guy behind the counter the person behind the counter and tell them what you like and a lot of times they they're pretty knowledgeable they know what books are on the shelves and they can point you in a direction to uh find something interesting and you can throw down a little cash on the t on the on the counter and kind of help them do their thing. Exactly. Um, 
uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer back to one of our prior episodes. Eric Stevenson making the comment that this is the golden age of comics. There is so much, so much good product out there. And I know that's bad English, and I apologize. But there's so many books out there that are just so well written, so well drawn, uh, and colored, and ink. There's a lot of great talent out there. There's so many worlds that can, they're just waiting to be explored by the reader. This is, and now's a great time to, to take that journey. And that is in every possible genre that you can think of. Everything, yeah. Not, not, whatever, whatever your fetish, whatever your thing, whatever you like, there is almost certainly a really badass comic out there waiting for you that you will find interesting that you will like that you will maybe even love who knows just just talk to the, the people behind the counter and they will hook you up mm-hmm. yeah it's not just superheroes it is fantasy noir horror sci-fi I, I i can keep on going until the end of time there's just it, there it's just it's i'm mumbling now but there's a lot of good stuff out there. Nate. There's so much stuff out there you don't even know where to start. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this thing. Fried right. shrimp, broiled shrimp, boiled shrimp. Yeah, don't take don't take that too far. We'll have to pay royalties or something. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this thing's been so successful that they've they've spun off a uh, a Halloween version. Uh, so now there's one, uh, you know, free comic book day is the first Saturday in May, and but now there's Halloween Comic Fest, and I believe this is going to be the third annual, I believe, third or fourth. And that's first, usually... First one was in 12, yeah. Okay. So, and that's usually the last Saturday in October, which would be right around, right around Halloween, of course. So now it's twice a month. Or twice a year, and, it, and that's that's fun too, because it's essentially, you know, same principle except for the books are a little bit more Halloween themed, and that's and that's cool. I I enjoy that because I like seeing uh, the kids uh, all dressed up in costume to come in, and you know maybe we might give them a little candy too. You get free sure. comics, and you may get some free candy too. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially especially if you're into horror comics, because that's when they pull those puppies out. Oh yeah, it gets fun. It does. Speaking as someone who does like the horror comics, <laughs> couldn't tell there, Mikey. Ah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not drooling. No, you're drooling. Anyway, if I may, there was sure. one thing in Joe Field's article. He was talking about gimmickry that you could use the free comic book day to get away from gimmickry, which was at the time uh, six different covers, and all they are are different colors, or uh, die-cast covers. Uh, some had were gold-bound, or they were with a triptych cover. The only gimmickry you really see now is maybe some of the prizes they give. Prizes as in the, the small figures. Uh, Hero Clicks, as we've seen, has got into this now. And they are giving away, the past few years anyway, they've given away two figures as a set and a small mat to play those two figures on. Now, this is not a full-size Hero Clicks mat, but it is something that you can use to learn to play the game. Yes. It includes instructions on how to play the game. Yes, that's exactly. Yeah. And that's pretty cool that they've done that. Uh, I know this year that there's going to be a starter, special starter set for Dice Masters as well. So now with kids who uh, own both those, both those games uh, is, is spreading, uh, branching out a little bit. So that's pretty cool to be able to do that. That they're, that they're doing that too. And they need to take advantage of that. Uh, and of course, uh, it's been so successful that there's been an RPG 
uh, RPG day. Um, yeah, as we're recording this, we're a couple of days away from International Tabletop Day, where you know they can uh, you know it's a day that we can go to the store and demo. You can find out about some of the latest games coming out, and there's usually some giveaways of promo cards or something like that for it's designed for a specific game. So it's obviously it's obviously been successful enough that others are using it to promote their products. Yeah, Whether... Free RPG Day is actually the 18th of June. That's right. So yeah. only a, only a few weeks after, well, like six, but whatever. But yeah, and this is this is actually the tenth annual of the Free RPG Day, so they jumped on pretty they early. They jumped on. Wow, I didn't realize it had been around that long. Yeah, I don't think International Tabletop Day is quite as old, and it's, but it's been around a few years for sure. And I mean, they obviously focus on like board and card games and such. Yeah, probably some dice games too. But. I want to say five, but I'm, I may be wrong on that. And it's it's a good thing because it brings attention to the comics where it needs to be when. There's so much focus on everything else, movies, TV shows. Uh, we were just talking before recording about animated movies, and you got all that. So this kind of brings it all back home and say, hey, this is where it started. You want to know about these characters? Here you go. Okay, uh, so uh, anything else we want to add before we... Wrap things up other than to say, hey, go to www.freecombookday.com. Uh, has all the information. Of course, we'll have a, a link on our notes um, of, of the books. And then plus, that m- most important thing is tab where you can find your local comic book shop who will be participating. Yes, you need to check that out so you can go. So you can go get your free comic books, but more importantly, you support a local business. That's always a good thing. Absolutely. So anything anything else before we wrap up and do our picks? I think you've hit it. Uh, I think get out there and check out some comic books, folks. That's what I think. There you go. Couldn't say it better myself. All righty. So when we come back, this week's picks. <laughs> And we're back, and it is time for our weekly picks, and leading off is Mike. Yep, I'm leading off. Um, And the first book I'm looking forward to is Hellboy in Hell, number nine. This is written and drawn by Mike Mignola, and it is the story that Hellboy himself had done his best to avoid for the longest time. And in this story, he has finally gone to hell and essentially taken over, fulfilled his destiny. Um, And this is, it's a very dark, very bleak story. And it's, I mean, it's, it borders on poetic at times. It's, it is so, it's just so really, it's so well done. It's horror, but it's not like, nasty or vicious horror it's just a really well told story and i just, even if you're not into horror you, you you still might want to take a look at this book it's just that good um like i said issue nine is coming out which is part of the second arc the first arc was absolutely beautiful so definitely worth checking out my second pick is a title called i mage um issue three is coming out and this is an action lab book and it's about it's a kind of a kind of a sci-fi fantasy blend. It's about a kid and his protective robot who are on a a starship flying through space and there's a major accident and the ship essentially blows up and the kid escapes with his his robot kind of saves his life and they blast down to the planet below which is populated by a fantasy kind of setting and he the first person he runs into is a couple of of mages on there and they're on a quest and so he he the kids 
learning fast and trying to figure out how, I mean, the, the whole magic thing throws him off and the, obviously with the mages think the kid is some sort of wizard because of what he can do and what he can make the robot do. And it's, it's, it's kind of a fun story. And this is kind of the end of the first arc, this issue three. Um, so definitely again, worth checking out some fun. It's a, it's a fun little story. Yeah, it has been pretty cool. I've enjoyed it so far as well. Uh, good picks. Uh, it is my turn, and I am starting off with 4001 AD uh, by Valiant, written by Matt Kint, uh, with art by Clayton Crane and David Mack. Uh, it's the next big event for Valiant, and I've enjoyed their last couple of events. You know, the Book of Death and Armor Hunters have been really high-quality stories. And this one, it takes place, obviously, in 4001. It's dealing with uh, the character Ray. He, uh, he's been kicked out of New Japan, and he's roaming Earth. Now, how the other characters of the Valiant universe is going to be involved, I, I have no idea, but I'm, I'm psyched. Uh, I'm thinking this is going to be pretty cool. The uh, Valiant has not let me down yet, especially with Matt writing, so... Uh, this could be a pretty cool adventure. Valiant has relaunched a lot of their characters successfully. So uh, this should be a good read, too. Yep, exactly. I, I think so, too. I think they've been knocking out of the park since since they started up again. And my second choice is Weaver's number one from Boom Studios, uh, written by Simon Spurrier, with art by Dylan Burnett. It's essentially a what they call a uh, Godfather meets Supernatural. The whole premise is uh, a young man named Sid is brought into this criminal organization, mob organization, and starts learning the inner workings. But he has ulterior motive. What that is, uh, obviously, we have to read and find out. I, I'm I'm intrigued. This sounds like it'd be pretty co- a pretty cool. Uh, I definitely like the whole supernatural aspect of this. So I definitely want to check this one out. Sounds like it might be a blast. Another size burger book. Yep. Yep, exactly. Uh, Les, what you got? Well, first I'm going to say that Aftershock Comics is putting out Rough Riders number two next week. And this is by Adam Glass, Pat Olaf. They are picking up the story of um, Teddy Roosevelt and his group, his dissident uh, group of characters that are on their way to Cuba to find out what sunk the USS Maine. Uh, we know from previous information that it is a, a cosmic or an alien uh, force that ha- handled this, but in this issue, they're going to have to fight among themselves to determine uh, positioning and whether or not this is a viable solution to the problem of, of the sinking of the main. My second choice is a is something that I'm really happy about because we once had or we once again have Carl Kolchak back. This time Moonstone's Dan Chamble Zombie PI will include Carl Kolchak on a mission. Kevin J. Anderson is a writer who has done Buku books. This is the first time he is putting his character, Dan Shamble, in a comic book. So pairing Kolchak and Shamble is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. The art is by Ibanez, and in this, the the pair confront a a group of hoodlum genies who use... Uh, mystic doorways to dump magical toxic waste and their bagman for all this is an unwitting nerdy werewolf kid so all this says to me is this is going to be quite amusing and I've, I've just got the greatest feeling about it yeah that sounds really cool yeah but does the werewolf have to be nerdy I mean oh, never mind go ahead <laughs> I, I think it kind of does because he's going to be a, a fool. He's going to be the 
well, obviously the bag man, and he's going to be holding the bag. So, yeah, to make him somewhat of a a nerd or an idiot, I think is only appropriate. Okay. It's funny how they're breaking stereotype by forming a new stereotype. But anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Success. Success. Cool. Ch- cool choices all around. Anything else before we wrap the things up? Um. Well, if we're gonna do shout outs. Sure. Obviously, we're gonna throw the Potter and Family shout out in here. Exactly. We are greatly appreciative of, of all of you folks passing along the word about our little humble little show here. Um, and we will, of course, do we'll do our best to return the favor. I also think it's about time we did a little bit of a shout out for Manny the Martyr. Oh who yeah, humbly provides the uh, the music for our humble little show here. Yes, yes, you're you're exactly right. I did a shout out on Facebook a while back, but we have not done one on on an actual episode. So thank you for thank you for bringing that to my attention, Mike. Yes, thank you, Manny the Martyr and our good friend Joel, who uh, allowed us to use a piece of their awesome music. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've got a link to their, I think it's their Facebook page, on our site. So check if you like the music you hear on our show, check it out there. Go to that link and check out their stuff. Yeah, uh, like their page and, and, and check, out their, check out their music. Uh, I also want to extend my love and appreciation to the Potter and family for helping us be more visible. And, and as Mike says, we're trying to return in kind. So thank y'all very, very much for your help. And we're, we're, we're definitely in your debt for that. Anything else? And of course we need to say thank you for listening to our episode. Uh, hopefully you've listened to all of them. If not, that's uh, that's understandable. There's a lot of good podcasts out there, but please check out our other episodes. Pass the word about us. Exactly. Tell a friend. And we also encourage any kind of feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Please, we, we want to hear what y'all think. You can email us at email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. If you go to our website, there is a contact us page. Feel free to send us a message through there. Uh, we are on Facebook. Uh, the Fellowship of the Geeks. We're also on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Uh, you can also contact Mikey through his personal Twitter page at Mikey Geek, and I have a Twitter page at Tom TC Geek. And one more shout out. I don't know, guys, if y'all caught it the other day, but uh, we got a shout out from our author who used a little bit of uh, Lester's quote of a review on their book, Lynn Kelly. Not just on the book, on the front cover. On the front cover, yes. Lynn uh, Lynn Kelly's uh, book, Darklands Requiem. And he's actually going to be at the Dallas Fan Expo, which is the first weekend in June, uh, June 3rd through 5th. So if y'all happen to be heading out to that con, uh, please go uh, go see him, say hi, tell us, say that the fellowship sent you, and please check out his book. I know Les really enjoyed the book. Um, yes, so, he did. So yes, please, please tell him we said hi and uh, support a local Ar- Arthur as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else before we sign off? I think that just about covers us. Sounds like it. Yeah. Well, once again, thank y'all for listening. We we do truly appreciate it. And until next time, read more comics and support your local stores. We thank you for listening to the show. Comments, suggestions, and questions can be sent to email at thefellowshipofthegeeks.net. You can follow us on Facebook at The Fellowship of the Geeks and on Twitter at Fellowship Geeks. Until next time, 